G'day, welcome to my channel. This is Adults with Overexcitabilities. Uh, and I'm really happy to start this because there's not a lot of discussion out there uh, about overexcitabilities or OEs. So what I'm hoping to do is give you a quick introduction to what this channel is gonna be about um, and a bit about my story uh, and why I've decided to do this. So overexcitabilities is a term that was coined by a Polish psychologist called Dabrowski. Um, and it refers to uh, an ability to be super stimulated. Um, it actually more genuinely translates to super stimulatability. So there's pros and cons to that. Um, and it affects gifted people, which means people with a high IQ. Uh, so most people think that you can kind of figure out your own problems, but with cognitive differences, you can get things uh, like emotional conditions, um, things like depression, those sorts of things. So there are pros and cons to it. Um, it's just different. It's like any other difference in life. There's no quality value to it. It just means you're a bit different. But because you are, it can mean some very real risks and issues in your life. Um, some of the worst include misdiagnosis with things like ADHD, clinical depression, bipolar, borderline personality disorder. Um, I myself got misdiagnosed with clinical depression once and got put on a very heavy dose of medication that I didn't need and was very bad for my body. So I do have some experience with that. Um, and I also have some experience with the depression risk and I'm not proud of it, but I've unfortunately gone down the worst of the worst paths myself. Um, and I'm really, really glad that I'm not in that space anymore and I understand a little bit now better who I am um, and I can manage that. But I do know that there's other people out there who may not understand why they're different or who they are and they might be suffering from the same risk. So I know a little bit about the power that finding out about this can have and I kind of equate it to the story of the ugly duckling. So if you know the Hans Christian Andersen story, um, and we might get into that in the next episode in a bit more detail, uh, the ugly duckling was actually a cygnet or a little baby swan who was hatched in a duck's nest and didn't realise that he wasn't a duck. And none of the other farmyard animals did either, and they just called him the ugly duckling. So they thought he was a defective or a lesser duck, the poor little thing. Uh, and then one day he grew up, um, and when he'd reached a point where he was very low, um, he came across a group of swans, uh, looked at his reflection in the pond and realised that he too was a swan and could appreciate the beauty in himself and the happiness in life. And it made a big difference to him knowing who he was. Uh, when I read about people's experiences with OE and finding out about it or the podcasts that I've listened to, uh, most people talk about breaking into tears and I was no different. I did it as well. It helped me make so much sense of my life and my past and everything about me up to date, basically, and why I was different and a little bit odd. Um, so I want to share that moment with other people because I know it really does have the power to change your life in the best possible way. The problem was, even though I'd been able to deal with my past, there wasn't really information out there on to how to live your best swan life, I suppose, um, as an adult. Because the information that's out there is centred around children, because we're talking about giftedness, so there's a big focus on education. Or it's written for psychologists by psychologists, hoping to get those people who are being misdiagnosed um, and are in those at-risk situations, which absolutely they should be doing. But for those of us just trying to do our little day-to-day -day swan thing, there's nothing out there um, at all. And I actually emailed a psychologist in Seattle who I'd seen on a podcast, um, and she basically emailed me back and said, I've got nothing except for one site in the Netherlands, and it's all scientific stuff and in Dutch. So good luck with that. Um, and I've bashed my head against the ebook wall and all sorts of stuff. Um, so this is kind of why I'm doing this. This is only my own swan diary, I guess, and it's pretty terrible. It's written in crayon as far as I'm concerned, but I want to save other working people out there the effort and expense and the heartache of looking for information that just isn't there because not everybody who's gifted is you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson or living a Nobel Prize winning life. Some of us have working lives and families and those sorts of things that we need to look after.
So on that note, what you're going to see in this video series is an overview of OEs very quickly and what they look like, because I think that's part of the message, although you can go out and Google that now um, and find out what overexcitabilities are. Um, and we'll also deal with some of the negative stuff that have come up because honestly, your pros are your pros and if it ain't itching, don't scratch it. You know, if it's working for you, keep going. Um, but problems are problems and we kind of want to fix them. Um, and because we're talking about my experiences and my problems, I'm going to funny them up and poke fun at myself because I've got OEs pretty bad <laughs> across all areas. Um, but the way I solved them was actually using my day job. So I use bits of solutions from everywhere. Um, including across the business world. Um, so Lean Six Sigma problem solving, I leaned on a little bit and it turned out to be quite successful for me. So I can point you in the direction of those things as well because they're all over the internet. As well. The other thing we'll be doing is maybe some fun stuff because again, you know, we're talking about negatives and problems. So big picture thinking for big thinking people um, and a little bit of celebrity spotting. So people who I've identified from history or celebrities today who may or may not have OEs, but hell, I'm going to call them out uh, because the whole point of this is to try and generate some discussion. And I was inspired to do this, um, even though it's just going to be fun and my little crayon diary. Uh, by a bloke called Alvin Fairley, who's a big fan of Australia and in particular Australian food. Now, Alvin lives in Mississippi and he's never been to this country, uh, but he hit on a fabulous idea when he took our favourite combination of Milo and vanilla ice cream and did the simple thing of throwing some wheat bix in it, which is a breakfast cereal. Now, we in Australia are very familiar with these foods and could instantly see the genius in this idea, so it's fantastic. But Alvin hasn't even been to our country and he wasn't raised on these foods, but he's just proof that you can have fun and have passion and creativity and a bit of a willingness to play um, and you can come up with great ideas. So that's all I'm hoping to do um, is to have a play and have a bit of fun. So what this isn't, and here's my warning, this is not professional advice. Um, I'm not an expert in anything. This is not professional advice and it's certainly not recommendations for you in your personal circumstances. Um, and it's not even reflective of everyone else's experience with OEs either. So this is just me, my little swan diary written in crayon. So please remember, I'm not an expert. I'm just one person with OEs trying to share some ideas in order to spread the happiness. So next video, I'll see you. We'll be looking at what OEs are in a bit of detail and who they affect. Until then, see you later.